Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is so good to see each and every one of you. Welcome to all of those joining us online. So glad you could be with us in community and worship today. Just a few announcements that I would like to bring to your attention as we get started. Uh, please note that we are starting to gather and needing a snow shovel team. I know, where's the snow? But it will come, we know it will come, and uh, so we're trying to be prepared for that. So if you have any interest, uh, please contact the office for that. Um, also note that this is the week. We are on the fourth Sunday of Advent. We are rounding the corner and Christmas season is soon to be upon us. Uh, just a reminder that it is this Tuesday that we have a longest night service at 630. So if you are in a place where you just need a little sanctuary, need a little time, come join us. Tuesday at 6.30. Um, we'd be glad to worship and be in community together. A little reprieve for the holidays. Also, we have Christmas Eve candlelight service that will be happening both at 3.30 and 5.30. And I can say to you with confidence that both of those will be hybrid services. So you're welcome to join us in person or you can join us online um, for either of those service times. Uh, where we'll be live streaming. And then finally today we will, um, just a reminder to our choir that they will need the sanctuary following the worship today. Apparently we had that windstorm. It, uh, I'm glad it wasn't as bad as it could have been. <laughs> uh, but things shifted and so we'll need to clear the space so uh, choir can record and share their music for Christmas time. So we'll look forward to that. Now at this time, let us take a moment and I ask you to join me in the call to worship. We are seeking deeper faith, a place to belong, the feeling that God is here in this room. We are seeking We are seeking the freedom to lead, the courage to love, the conviction to act in the face of injustice. We are seeking, but here in this space, we are found. Take a deep breath. This is your sanctuary. God is here. We are found. God's love is like an open door. God's love is the street light that guides us home. God's love is a warm bed to fall into. God's love is a table with room for you. God's love is a crackling fireplace. God's love is the sun that streams through the windows. God's love is the roof over our heads and the floor beneath our feet. God's love is a home for you and me for neighbors and strangers, for family and friends, for enemies and partners. God's love is a home for all. Today, we light the candle of love to remind us of this truth. May it burn brightly in this space and, and even, even brighter, brighter in our hearts. hearts. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able and face the font as we confess our sin. 
Mary's world turned upside down with the visit of an angel. This is a moment we have, uh, we can relate to because over the course of the last year and a half, our world has seemed to turn upside down more than once. When those moments come, we hope to respond with grace. But more often than, th than not, fear can get the best of us. So today we turn to God in prayer, asking for God's guidance and grace in the places and moments we need most. Let us pray together now. God of safe spaces, we, we wish we were more like Mary, who in the face of great change went and sought help. She did not wait for help to find her. She walked to the shelter she needed. Too often we wait silently for the world to change around us instead of speaking up for the things we need. Forgive us for failing to care for ourselves the way you would care for us. Give us the courage to be more like Mary. God of safe places, we would be more like Elizabeth, who greeted Mary with laughter and contagious joy. How many people have crossed our doorstep, and how many times have we failed to see them? Give us the courage of Mary and the grace of Elizabeth. Gratefully we pray. Family of faith, even if we miss the person standing on our doorstep, even if we fail to care for ourselves the way God would care for us, even if we forget and ignore, turn away and shut down, God still loves us. There is nothing we can do to lose God's love. Rest in this promise. If we get lost, if we mess up, if we withhold love, we are claimed, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we come to your scripture today hoping that it will feel a bit like an open door, like Elizabeth welcoming Mary, like coming home. We want to fall into it. We want to find sanctuary here. We want to breathe easier just hearing these words, and we want to find ourselves laughing because this good news is just too good to keep inside. So hover close to us now, we pray. Open the doors to our hearts so that we might find sanctuary in your words. Gratefully we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to invite our children to come forward. Come on up. Or down. I guess down, really, right? Good morning, good morning. And good morning. 
How are you doing today? You were working the cameras. Busy and important stuff that you're doing. My staff won't let me update it. Well, that's okay because we're in worship right now, so that is all good. And guess what I brought with me today? Can either of you tell me? Yes? And what do they do? They allow you to see upload. I found my adults like at school. Yes, it allows you to see something better, closer, right? Is there any other use? No. Well, you know what? So, yes, you are right. Does my eyeball look bigger? Yeah, yeah. yeah? cool. Yes. In a minute, okay? So hang on with me. And also, this, this if you put it through light, let light go through it, it makes it that even brighter and hotter as well, doesn't it? So they can be used for all kinds of things. Well, today, we hear about Mary. She is the mother of Jesus, and she just found out that she is pregnant with him. And she runs to Elizabeth's house, her cousin, because she needs a safe spot. Have you ever needed a safe spot, I wonder? Yeah? My safe spot is, is my Minecraft world. Your safe spot is Minecraft world. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. No, I mean, those are real, right? And sometimes have you ever built forts, or do you have that little place in your room that you might go? Uh-huh. Oh, you had a campsite and live in a tent. All right, guys, you know what? Guys, guess what? We're talking here and not Minecraft, okay? But yes, I do appreciate and understand that. Well, today, so Mary finds her safe spot, and in that place, guess what she says? She says, oh, my soul magnifies the Lord. In other words, she sees God clearer and better and up close. She sees that God is rich in mercy and strength, that God is going to lift up the lowly like herself, that God is going to fill the hungry with good things. She sees God on the move, and she is then also not only seeing God more clearly, she also is helping us to see God more clearly. How about that? And you know what? Every time we read and see, we have people through scripture, people around us who help us to uh, that magnify God for us as well. And the more and more we see God clearly, the more that we can become magnifiers of God as well. How about that? That we can share those safe places, those places of grace just like Elizabeth did for Mary, and Mary does for us. And Jesus who comes, he is, acts and speaks in a way that we see God so clearly. And that is the good news for us today. So I would invite you and all the congregation to pray with me an echo prayer today. Dear God, Dear God, Thank you for Mary and Jesus. Thank you for Mary and Jesus. And the many others who magnify. And the many others who magnify. Your love, mercy, and grace. Your love, mercy, and grace. That then help us. That then help us. To magnify your love, mercy, and grace with others. To magnify your love, mercy, and grace with others. Thank you, and amen. Thank you, and And before you go, and before you go, hang on. Stay where you are. Be kind to Miss Debbie. But these are for you. And when you look in them, and you see things through the week, remember that Maybe you can be a place where people see God more clearly. All right? Thank you for coming up. Wow. Our first reading today is from Micah. Micah chapter 5. But you... 
O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. God comes to us in the word. Our second reading today is from Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. Consequently, when Jesus came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. And then I said, See, God, I have come to you, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. And when he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings, and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And in it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. God comes to us in the word. Just a, um, a little heads up, today we will be doing something we did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I will be reading the gospel, but our gospel really turns into a psalm or a song. And in that time, I would invite you um, to read back and forth with me. So this side will be reading the unbold verses, and this side will be reading the verses in bold. So we will cue you in that time. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Join me now. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call and be blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and 
his holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from the generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. When I was growing up, many of the kids from town would gather in the park across the street from my house, pretty lucky, huh, to play. And often it was in some form of a game that would go of, of tag. And one of the rules of tag that we had was there was this slide right in the middle of this little park, um, and that would be our safe zone. So in other words, if the person who was it was running around and chasing you, you could grab onto that slide in that particular place and they couldn't get you. So you were safe and could catch your breath before playing on. Who knew that even as kids, somehow, we somehow understood to create sanctuary while playing tag in the park. It's true in life too. It's so important in our lives, especially when we are being chased with uncertainty, difficulty, and suffering. Having a sanctuary, a safe haven, a non-judgment zone, a place and space to catch our breath, a time of reprieve to regain perspective, strength, and energy is so important. Perhaps it is a favorite spot in the house or a place outside maybe in the church sanctuary or somewhere else. It also can be a person who allows that safe space to feel cared for and loved, a chance to breathe. Just think who is the first person you go to share your life with, they are likely your sanctuary. Well, in our gospel today, Mary has just been given the news from the angel Gabriel that she has been chosen to bear God's son. And out of earnest faith, Mary says yes to having this child. Yet, it brings many complications with it. She is engaged to Joseph, but not married yet. A pregnancy now would mean that Joseph would likely and could dump her. Her family would be greatly dishonored. Worse yet, she could be stoned by her community for her perceived action before marriage. So her answer takes great faith and great courage. And what does she do after this encounter with the angel and her life taking a sudden turn of uncertainty and possibility, uh, and possible danger? She seeks sanctuary, 
Understandably, she leaves with haste out of Nazareth to the countryside in the little town of Judea, finding refuge at her cousin's house, Elizabeth, who is also carrying child. Elizabeth, then, is a safe person and exactly what Mary needs. For Elizabeth welcomes Mary with open arms, blesses her, shares the joy of her own child who leaps within her and, ex and, and affirms both of their places in God's eyes in taking these active roles in something much greater than themselves. And in the good news that is about to be born. This gives then Mary the space she needs to take it all in. She will be the God bearer. The child will be God's good news to all people. And it's in this sanctuary of Elizabeth's company that Elizabeth's Joy contagiously spills over, and Mary sings, giving praise to God for the good news that God is bringing through her womb. And Mary deflects the blessing given to God, who is doing this incredible thing. My soul magnifies the Lord, Mary sings. And then her song goes on to do just that. And in this moment, Mary experiences prophetic joy as she sings of God's justice. She sings of a reality in which humanity's sinful and unjust status quo is reversed, with a world reordered and renewed, a world revolutionized by love and justice, only the Christ she carries in her womb can birth it into being. This takes the shape of God's class conversion against powerful thrones implicating imperial systems. God demonstrates mercy to just our generations of those who have not had access to the resources they need. Both the oppressed and the oppressor need to be liberated from systems of oppression. The poor receive from the Holy One's abundance, and the rich are released from hoarding and the lack of trust in the Creator's provision. Mary's joy then stems from her belief that God is about to do something spectacular through her to fulfill the long-held promises made in covenant to God's people. In this sanctuary, Mary can share in the joy with her cousin Elizabeth, openly communicating their visions and hopes for the future. As God draws these lowly women together, who will be the center of divine activity. What a gift for them to be together, to share in this moment. You know, we can learn from Mary. How often do we wait till everything is just perfect before we allow ourselves to experience that joy that comes on us. And how often, right in the midst of feeling joy, do we start wondering, when's the other shoe gonna drop? You know what I'm talking about when we get that good news and have a joyful experience, and before you can count to five, you, the feeling is gone. Brené Brown calls this foreboding joy. She says, joy is the most vulnerable emotion we feel. And she continues saying, 
And that's saying something given I study fear and shame. Joy comes to us, surprises and delights us until we start thinking of all the catastrophes that could possibly come, thus quickly moving into foreboding and self-protection. The thing is, there is no way to prepare for pain. If we try to prepare for some possible looming disappointment, then Brené says that we miss and squander the joy we need to build up as an emotional reserve. The joy that allows us to build up resilience for when tragic things happen. In fact, I would say even at times in the midst of suffering and tragedy. When joy comes, it is even sweeter. Finally, Brown says that the practice of gratitude is what can feed that joy. So if we look at Mary and Elizabeth, their joy and gratitude sit right alongside their hardest questions of the unknown road ahead. Will Joseph stick around? Will Zechariah speak again? Will Mary's parents disown her? Will the elderly Elizabeth live long enough to see her son uh, reach adulthood? Will both uh, women survive the dangers of childbirth? Will these mysterious babies of unfathomable promise really and truly change the world? Or will they die trying and shatter their mother's hearts with their deaths? As Mary finds sanctuary with Elizabeth together, they experience utter joy while songs burst forth, singing God's praises right from the heart of their burning questions. How might we find joy even as we experience uncertainty, pain, suffering, is all around us today. We need to find those places of sanctuary for ourselves where we have time to breathe, experience gratitude, respite, and love. God's presence and promise meets us there and fills us building resilience for whatever is before us. Those sanctuaries allow us, even for a few quivering moments, to perceive the world as God perceives it, bruised and beautiful, raw and redeemed, full of pain and joy. The time that Mary spends with Elizabeth prepares her to become a sanctuary for the Christ child. With courage, Mary faces any possible repercussions as Jesus develops and grows within her. When we have those places and spaces of sanctuary with our God, we can grow too to be sanctuaries for others, neighbors, family, community, refugees, homeless, those who need to be lifted up like in Mary's song, bringing joy and giving praise to our God. You know, 
in my preparation for this week. I have had an earworm oh, all week. It's an old camp song. And so I am going to force you to listen to it. <laughs> and maybe it'll be released from me. And it goes like this. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be your living sanctuary for May our love be authentic, our joy contagious, as we create sanctuary for one another while waiting in hope. Holy God, our prayers are often one lovely act of seeking. We bow our heads, we close our eyes, and we seek. We seek you, we seek belonging, we seek sanctuary. 
And what is lovely is that we know deep in our bones that if we knock, we will find you. So today we praise, we pause our seeking to simply give you thanks. Thank you for the Elizabeth in our lives, the ones who have been there when we needed them most, the ones who have blessed us with joy, allowing our happiness to take up space, the ones who have opened the door for us and ushered us in, and for these other thanksgivings we offer silently or aloud or in the comments of the live feed. And thank you, not only for the Elizabeths in our lives, but for the strangers who have cared for us, for those older and wiser who have paved the way for us, and for individuals who share no relation to us, but love us like family. Our lives are undoubtedly better because of them. Gracious God, we also pray for those without an Elizabeth in their life. We pray for those who do not have a hand to hold in the dark, or who do not have a front porch to show up on, or even a front porch to call their own. We pray for those in life transitions who carry that fear and anxiety alone. We pray for all who know loneliness in the face of these hardships, and for these other concerns we offer silently, out loud, or in the comments of the live feed. Wrap your arms around those individuals. Circle back again and again, dwelling tenderly in the wounds of their hearts until healing might be found. Open our eyes so that we might see the need in our own backyard. Thank you for being our safe place. Thank you for always welcoming us home. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us take this time and share Christ's peace with one another. And as you are getting settled, have your, yeah, you know that you're going to be getting up again, but this gives you a little respite to sit, and I just want to give you thanks again. All those who are, um, have offerings, I invite you to share them. Um, at the end of the service, there are offering boxes there. It is you and your commitment and all of your time, treasure, um, and, and uh, skills and, and talents that we are able to continue the mission forward here at St. Stephen's, and so thank you for all that you do. Let us now continue in prayer. Good and gracious God, we give these gifts for the seekers. We give these gifts for those who need sanctuary. We give these gifts for those who build sanctuaries. We give these gifts for those who have lost sanctuary and for those who find sanctuary all over the place. Use these gifts to bring us closer to home. With joy and hope in our hearts, we pray. Amen. Amen. And at this time, I would invite those online to prepare their tables, and I would invite you to stand as we are in preparation here. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope, we praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. And when we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. And at this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. All is now ready. You may come forward as the ushers will help guide and direct you. Those who are online, uh, do know that the body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Come to Christ's banquet, feast on God's gift of grace.
Please stand as you are able, receive the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his love and grace. Amen. Amen. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all, through Jesus Christ, our host and guest. Amen. Amen. As you leave this service, your service begins. Comfort the homesick. Open your doors to others. Seek and be sanctuary. Be brave enough to go home by another way and remember that here in God's house, all are welcome. God is here to meet you wherever you are. In the name of our foundation, God, Spirit, and Son. Amen. near. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.